O Lord, give me the tongue of the learned, that I may know what I ought to say. And if there be any word good for the use of edifying, give it, that thou mayest minister grace unto the hearers. Grant that I may speak boldly. Over my mouth wide, O Lord, do thou fill it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been a while since we last met. A lot has happened over these last two weeks. We had a snow event, or my favorite name for it is Snowgood 21. <laughs> it canceled our mass for two weeks. Uh, it canceled our mass two weeks ago. And then the aftermath uh, caused, our, uh, caused us to cancel our last mass last week. So we missed the last uh, Sunday of Epiphany, or the great Alleluia before the great silencing of Lent. And then we missed Ash Wednesday, so we pushed it to last Sunday. So we are going to have Ash Sunday, but then we missed that one too. So... We've had to cancel a lot. But when we had to cancel uh, two weeks ago, Deacon Mike called me up. He texted, or actually he texted me, asking if we could open up the parish hall for uh, any homeless uh, who, hadn't, uh, who didn't have a place to get out of the uh, snow. And I told him that Sunday was only going to be the tip of the iceberg and that it was going to get much colder. So if we open up, we would have to stay open until the temperatures rise back above freezing. And if we're going to do it, we had to do it right. In order to do this, we had to have volunteers around the clock. And not only one volunteer, but at least two at a time. The entire time we're open. If you can find the help, then we can open up. But I don't want to do it unless we can do it right. He texted me back, okay. And then we talked about a couple of places for him to potentially look to get the volunteers, and then he set off to work. I, on the other hand, because I wake up at an ungodly hour on, on Sundays, I went and took a nap and let, let him to, uh, the, and let the process work. Then after about two hours, he texts me back and says, I have enough, just waiting for the okay. And we even have some offers for financial backing. Uh, to some extent. I said, all right, make it so. On the first day, there wasn't really much to write home about. Apparently, those that are homeless in the area had figured out their plan for riding out the snow. We had no people yet, but we were ready. We had opened ourselves up for use, but it didn't look like we would be needed too much, and that's actually a good thing. But like Abraham in our Old Testament lesson today, we heard the call and we responded with, here am I, which is a response in the Bible that indicates one's willingness to do the will of God immediately. We may not be uh, needed, but we were going to be here just in case. And then on Monday, the temperature started to drop and the people started to lose water and, and power. And because we had uh, put ourselves out there, when we were, uh, we were ready when the need became apparent. Luckily for us, when you start something from scratch that, that needs an emergent need, there is grace to cover the process as you feel it out. There were a few small hiccups in the beginning as we were beginning to, as we were beginning to understand just just what all the things were that we needed to, to do and how to address the, properly the situation. But by Tuesday, we had an idea of what to expect and a plan of how to address it, so we were golden. By Wednesday, we had even fine-tuned the process as we learned that in order for this to all work, it, needed, it, it took our full commitment. There could be no gaps. One lapse in concentration led to a, a bit of chaos, and so we figured out how to make it go smooth from there on, and it did. Now that we figured out the structure of how everything was going to work, we could really listen in on the call of God and turn this situation into something really special. 
one of the things that that we did is that we were proactive in seeking out uh, seeking people to help normally I hate social media this should be news to none of you. But this is one of the time, one of the few times that social media became a tool, and it's one of those things that redeems the entire thing and allows it to show its worth. We tapped into a few Facebook pages to help get the word out that we were ready, that we were all, uh, that, I'm sorry, that we're getting the people out, uh, getting word out to people, and pages that were already dedicated to helping people. They had shared our desire to house people and that we were looking for volunteers. We had someone dedicated at all times to scrolling through Facebook, trying to find people, trying to find a need and address that. And once a need was made known, we would check our pantry to see if we, we could fill their need with what we had on hand. And if so, we coordinated about how to get it to them. If they felt com comfortable driving, then they came to us. If not, we, we had uh, uh, people to go out and take it to them so we could coordinate with drivers. But if we didn't have the supplies on hand, then we put out a request to the community and then connected those who wanted to give with those who were in need. And this whole process was just amazing to watch. And it was amazing to witness the Lord work through this community that only a few months ago had been in each, other, each other's throats. All of a sudden, coming together to help out those in need seemingly became the highest priority in the town. And through our little church, the needs of the people were met, and seemingly there was no limit to the type of need that we were able to address. There were a couple times that the needs seemed to be outside of the realm that we had set out to do. For instance, there was a guy who broke down on the side of the road and he was, uh, he was brought to us by the, actually I think he was brought to the, uh, to the college first and then uh, they couldn't meet his need and so uh, he was sent to us. And he thought he just needed a jump and maybe some gas. And, uh, but we, we did some little problem solving and actually he needed an alternator. I just recently bought an alternator and it was, I think mine was over a thousand dollars, but you know, I'm sure he could probably gotten it done for 500 to $800, but he was just passing through. And we, so we priced the part, we needed $300. And initially, we were tempted to use some of the funds donated to us to be able to, to help him. But instead, I suggested that uh, we wait. We place the need out there and just see what happens. We have the money that if that happens, if, if no one steps up, then we can, we can make that happen for him. But let's just see what happens. Very soon, someone covered the cost of, his, uh, of the alternator if we would go to uh, AutoZone and pick it up. And we had someone in mind that could put it on for him, but as we were talking about it at, at the uh, front of the parish hall, someone stepped up and said, no, no, I'm, I, I've got a guy right now that can uh, put it on. As soon as you get it, call me and I'll put it on for you. And uh, sure enough, that's exactly what happened. People were coming through, out of the woodworks, it seemed, to help this guy who was just passing through. That night we were able to make a call and get some of the, uh, some facilities open to allow everyone uh, in the parish hall who wanted or really needed to take a shower. This was, I think, Wednesday or Thursday. It was, everyone was getting a bit ripe at that point. And so we were able to get the shower facilities opened and when this happened, he was away at the showers, so he had no idea what, what happened. When we came home, when he came back, he was just floored at what had happened. He just didn't know what to do with it. This was all taken care of because he happened to be passing through Gainesville when his car gave out. He was at the right time, and he was sent our way. It turns out the next day was his 23rd birthday. So not only in the midst of this, we were able to make him a, a cake 
and celebrate his birthday with him, and then we sent him on his way. This was the kind of thing that happened here the entire time. The unexpected blessings that uh, were able to happen because we just, we decided to open ourselves up to be used by God by saying, here am I. This was the fine tuning of the program that, uh, that it needed. This was when it went from a service to a blessing. It took a lot of hard work to make this happen. It took long hours and a willingness to place the mission above the desires of the self. There were many of times where Deacon Mike, Angela, and I had to kick each other out. I mean, it was B, she, she had to go home for the night. You just, it was too long to stay up there the entire time. It was too long to hold on too tight and say, if I am not here, this cannot happen. So we allowed ourselves to be kicked out for the night or the, for the time being, to allow other people to pick up and take it while we were gone. So, so long as we were there the entire time, we couldn't possibly, all we would have been doing was detracting from it because our, we would have been uh, uh, frustrated with each other, too tired to be any, really any good use. Our bodies would have broken down to the point where we would not have been able to do anything. So instead, egos were sidelined, and the process that we had set up was trusted, and that made all the difference. It took everyone the, to make this what it ended up being, and no one could hold on too tightly, or it would have damaged the entire thing. But it isn't a, uh, that how min but isn't that how ministry is supposed to be in the service? We're not supposed to do things solely by ourselves. We cannot be the whole body of Christ all by ourselves if there are other people there with us who are willing to, to, go, at, to go along with us. And if we were solely the, the body of Christ, we would be preventing that person from using the gifts and talents that God gave them to be a blessing to others. Holding on too tightly to the reins when doing the work of the Lord is like saying, here am I, send me. But then, that being the extent of our willingness to listen to God. If Abraham had done it this way, he would have completed the action of sacrificing his own son because he would not have heard the cease and desist from the angel as he was plunging the knife. He started but then he listened the entire time. And it takes that, that uh, a willingness to go, but also a willingness to listen the entire time. It was an absolute blessing this last week to be able to provide this service to the community. And at one point in the midst of all this, Angela looked at me and she, re she recalled the saying that I said at the annual parish meeting, that we are the heart of Gain. She looked at me and she just said, the heart of Gainesville, and kind of winked at me. I said, you're right about that. And I thought, Lord be, the Lord being our helper. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.